It has been a while since we spoke about our long termer, the Royal Enfield GT650. And like I promised, we have been busy adding racer bits to this cafe racer. In this video, we shall be discussing the pros and cons of making the GT650 similar to the GTR650 race bike. But before we proceed any further, make sure that you are subscribed to Zigwheels and hit that little bell notification icon to get the latest updates. The first step towards building this racer was giving it the proper old school cafe racer looks. And for that, we got in touch with Pune based Autolog Designs who hooked us up with this, the Rec 2.0 fairing. While this does give this the proper retro racer looks, installing this requires some serious skills. What you get at the end is a bike that looks even more gorgeous than it did. The Conti GT in this Mr. Clean Avatar was already a head turner. And now with this retro fairing, it has become a conversation piece. Heck, even I can't park it anywhere and not look back a couple of times just to admire how beautiful this looks. To accommodate the fairing, the clip-ons were lowered by over 4 inches and that also meant replacing the stock mirrors with these RE's official bar and mirrors. Now this has resulted in a super committed riding posture which is what you'd love on a race bike. I loved it on my stints to Lunavla and Lavasa because this gave me better leverage around corners and also helped me keep the soft front suspension loaded. This meant better stability at high speeds than the stock bike and also boosted the cornering confidence. Even though I loved it on the days that I was craving for some serious speeds, everyday riding wasn't as glorious as I thought it would be. As much as I loved these lower bars when attacking corners or for short stints, commutes or even longer rides are a harrowing experience. Since my body weight now rests on my hand, going over bad roads or even when braking hard ends up being a painful experience. And now I have to lean a lot forward to reach these clip-ons. And this ends up giving me a really really sore back after every long ride. And I'm 5'11", so for anyone who's shorter, they are going to have a tougher time. Going fast on smooth roads with this fairing on is a great experience since now you can tuck behind the fairing at high speeds. But when we first installed the fairing, we encountered a lot of squeaks and rattles even on the slightest bumps, which was a bit irritating. That said, Autolog has been proactively fixing this issue first with this new brace that's on sale now and then with rubber and foam spacers to dampen the vibrations. And just as we thought all the issues have been solved, there was a twist in the tail. With just 8000 kilometers on the Odo, the cone set needed replacement. While the cone set issue was resolved, the Royal Enfield mechanics ended up messing up the setting of the fairing brace. So while Autolog had fixed the issue with the fairing, the RE mechanics ensured that the YB squeaky experience was back. And that wasn't the end of it. The stock C8 Zoom Cruise tires were spent in just 8,500 kilometers, and unsurprisingly, there aren't any good options available in the market. By the way, which tires have you been using on your 650, and how long did they last? Let us know in the comments below. So the next step towards building this retro racer would have been 17-inch rims and stickier rubber. Unfortunately though, Royal Enfield is taking this Continental GT back and that's the end of journey for our long termer. And even though I couldn't build the retro racer that I dreamt of, Ari is taking care of that by launching the road legal version of the GTR 650. That said, Ari is also gearing up to launch another update to this Continental GT, which hopefully is one with the alloy wheels that has already been spotted in the last two years. And even though this 650 has left the Zig Garage, a new one has joined our fleet. So make sure that you follow us on our social media handles to get the latest updates. Until then, ciao!